I put something on my Facebook a little while back. I said, oh, if you don't train when life is easy, you'll be useless to your loved ones when life is hard. Now, I thought that would be quite um, shocking to people that might get some adversive reactions. Actually, people seem to quite like it. Um, the background of my own life at the time, certainly continues, as only a week ago, um, was there's some really tough shits going on in my life right now. Family ill, separated from my partner, some, you know, some, some fairly, uh, my, my dad is in the hospital having had an overdose, some, some fairly hardcore things. Um, but what I was noticing is I, f I felt pretty resourced and a week later I still feel like, you know, I'm not saying I haven't been sad in the last week or frustrated or scared, you know, but I've been managing it pretty well. And um, I don't think that's because of the person I am. I think in many ways I'm quite average. Um, but, but, but what I do have is a really strong practice background. Um, so 20 years of doing martial arts, nearly 10 years of, of pretty much daily meditation practice, have a dance practice, a yoga practice. Um, you know, I have pretty solid practice background. And what, what that means is that it, when times are difficult like this, um, how can I put this? I'm, I'm just more together than the other members of my family. Um, and I'm not saying this to boast or to break them to some really nice people in my family, um, but there's a certain training there, right? And that, that has an effect. Now, unless I've been wasting my time for 20 years of practice, uh, it, it should have had some positive effect. And showing up in resilience, I think, is one of the ways that it, it shows up. Um, and I think this also shows the kind of ethical imperative here, because it can often look very selfish to spend time meditating, you know, I spend about a month, a, a, a year, I'd say on average, on retreat or doing intensive yoga or meditation, uh, several evenings a week, you might say, well, you could spend that with your wife, you could spend that uh, working, spend that helping people, you know, and, and, and it can look selfish to do that. Um, and people's practice can be selfish, it can be really self-motivated. Um, and what, what for me um, becomes apparent during these times is, as Michael Stone says, we don't know how we'll be called to serve. And to have that practice background um, isn't just like a nice thing. I, for me, there's an, an ethical drive to practice so that we can be of use to our loved ones. Um, I, don't, I don't want to be harsh to anyone that doesn't have a practice, and I'm certainly not um, very hardcore about what that might mean, because that might be different things for different people. Um, however, uh, I would be um, gently critical of the ethics of someone who didn't have any kind of practice, because sooner or later, people you care about are going to be relying upon you. Now, I hope this, again, this doesn't sound like superior or judgmental, uh, but it's just the case. Like, your practice is going to show when the shit hits the fan uh, to a greater or lesser degree. And, and, and that, to me, is an ethical imperative to practice. It's like, if we don't, how can we be, how are we responsible? How are we grown-ups? You know, I might gender that and say, how am I a man if I don't, do, if I don't have that spine and solidity to... Um, you know, not to be inhuman, not to not feel, or to be invincible or anything like that, but to um, be able to do our best for people we care about.